would really like to have a much better understanding of projection than they currently do. Of projection? Yes. Well, pretty much every time you don't feel an emotion that's really within you, you're automatically projecting it anyway. So most of us are walking projection units, you could say, because there's, there's a lot of emotions that we're holding onto within us, and every one of those emotions gets projected onto the universe. So, um, but, but a lot of that is sort of unconscious projection, in the sense that we're not aware because we, we have yet to really come to terms with that particular emotion or even be even acknowledge that that particular emotion exists within us but um, but with um, the kind of projection I was talking about is just rage and anger which is an overt projection of your emotion so every time you go into rage or anger or resentment hatred all of those kind of emotions you are now conscious that you're trying to change something in your external environment. You're, you're trying to manipulate your external environment. You're trying to change other people and blame or blame other people for how you feel. So that's a very overt form of projection. So you could say there's really two forms of projection of your emotion. One is when you're basically just sitting on the emotion, fairly unconscious about what the emotion is, and and find yourself just sitting on it, sitting on it, sitting on it, and you're not even wanting to be aware, perhaps, at that point, um, and you're just sitting on an emotion. Well, that's when you project to the universe the most, but you're totally unconscious of it. Um, and when I say project the most, that's when you're sitting on an emotion like that, you're basically just projecting that emotion outward to the universe in an unconscious manner, but also it's undirected. There's no direction in it. It's not a specific person, generally, that you're ch p picking out to project at, but rather it's just mankind and the world in general, and the universe in general receives the emotion from you without, without you really being aware. And this is why a lot of animals, for example, don't automatically come up and sit on our shoulder or, or all of those kind of things, because, because in the end they can feel our projection and they're afraid of it even though we're not aware that it's coming out of us. So that's one form of projection. The other form is when you really know what you're upset or you know who you're upset with and you, you just project all of what you can project at that person. Whether that be neediness or whether it be anger or rage, resentment, hatred, oftentimes we know exactly what we're doing under those. So if you can imagine the entire audience here, the more more we sit on our emotion, we're just naturally projecting it to the universe, but we're not aware of it and everybody is basically receiving it. But we can single out a person in the audience and if everyone in this audience projected rage at that one person, then you would know the difference in terms of the feelings inside of you as to the difference between those two states. That's very, very different than an audience just projecting what they're sitting on compared to actively trying to change something that's in their external environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. The, there were a couple of levels. Like, <laughs> you, you were doing a talk one day, and it was in Budrum, yep. and you were doing it in a very humorous vein, almost rhetorical, and you were saying things like, um, you're all catalyzed by me being AJ, this crazy guy that comes along and talks about the divine love path and everything, and I'm sitting there in my head and I'm going, no, we don't. <laughs> like, and almost arguing with you all the way, and then I realised what I was doing. It's like I was being really negative about something that you were doing in a very light-hearted vein, yep. that I was resisting in some way. Yeah. So would that be projecting? Of course. Yeah, okay. There's also, whenever you say, no, you don't, when you do, that's also a projection. A projection, okay. um, So a lot of people, uh, when I talk with them, they, uh, they often... Uh, feel quite confronted, right, about whatever the subject is on. And, and so they often say, look, no, I don't feel that. And I'll say, well, I'm sorry, but I can feel that from you. So, so that is certainly within you. And there'll be times in your future where you become more and more sensitive emotionally, more and more open, and the more open and sensitive you become, the more exact you can pinpoint another person's emotion and what they're actually, you know, sitting on inside of themselves. Um, so, for example, with the, the uh, is AJ Jesus question, if many of you had resolved it, you would be acting entirely differently than what you currently are. D does that make sense? 
and you, your actions prove whether you resolve questions or not in, at the soul level. At the soul level, when you resolve a question, it's like that question no longer exists anymore. There's no doubt in you anymore, you're, and it changes your entire life. So, for example, if all of, if all of you here were aware at the soul level that there's nothing to be afraid of with death, right, then most of you would no longer have any fear of any type. Right? Any type at all. So you wouldn't be afraid of people being nasty to you. You wouldn't be afraid of people wanting to torture you. You wouldn't be afraid of any of those things once you've fully resolved the question of what happens when you die, for example. So, so when you fully resolve a question, your actions and the way in which you live your life completely changes in, in almost every question you can consider. So let's, let, have we fully resolved the question as to whether there's a God? Well, you will fully resolve that question once you become at one with God. Does that make sense? You're not going to fully resolve that question before then. You can think that it's fully resolved, right? But, but there are still many blocks and there will be times when you'll go through your doubts, when you, when you have doubts and feelings that, oh, maybe it's not right, maybe it's all just a dream, maybe it's all just utopian presentation. Maybe everything AJ is speaking of is just like somebody's come up with a perfect world scenario and then, then talked about it, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, and so we haven't often at that point really resolved whether there's a God or not. Um, what happens to the human soul at death? Same sort of thing. If we have really resolved that, we would have far less fear, a far more desire. We would never act in a, in a place that's negative with regard to desire. We would always just pursue our desire no matter what the results. So m most of us don't do that, do we? What we do is we go, oh, I'm afraid that I'm not going to get enough money. And so now, and that's related ironically to the question of whether we've resolved the issue of death or not, believe it or not. Because if, if we had resolved the issue of death and we had also resolved the issue of abundance, we would no longer worry about getting money and we would no longer prostitute ourselves with our desires to get money automatically. So when you fully resolve something within yourself, it makes a huge difference to your entire life. And that's why I say to you that you have not fully resolved the issue even as to whether I'm Jesus or not. And I understand that. I'm not saying you do, do have to resolve it. But when you do resolve it, it will change your actions. Even your actions with me will be changed by that. It's because it, I understand what you're saying completely because even when you want to believe at 100%, you, you know inside that there's still doubts yep. and moments when... And wanting to believe is very, very different than believing. Uh, and believing is very, very different to knowing. Right? When you know uh, for certain, there's a whole difference. So for many of you, what's happened is that you suspect I am Jesus, <laughs> if we could put it that way, um, <laughs> You suspect because of the things I've taught over the two years and all these different truths that you've heard as a result and all those kind of things, you suspect that I, that I am the person I'm claiming to be, but there's still a lot of doubts involved and there's still a lot of influence in your personal life uh, that would tend to indicate that you don't really believe it. So, for example, many times I can feel a projection of the audience from something that I do, you know, um, to give you an example, I, I think in a talk or two ago, I mentioned that myself and Mary went to McDonald's. Right? And I could feel from the audience a lot of judgment about that. Right? And uh, you were one of them, A lot of judgment about that. Well, uh, to be honest, what I had was uh, a chai. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but, uh, but we also had to go to the toilet. So, that, you know, McDonald's is an ideal place for that. Thank you, McDonald's, uh, for that. Uh, when you're travelling, isn't it, sometimes? Um, and so, but the, because you hear it from me, you can go, automatic judgment, right? There's automatic, oh, would Jesus be doing this? Oh, I don't know, you know, AJ's doing the wrong thing there. And a lot of your personal issues come up and, and, and you will resolve a lot of those issues over time, obviously. And you'll also look at my actions with you in a completely different light once you resolve them. So it just takes time to do all of that, to resolve all of those things, yeah.